we want the, the kind of force to be in the handle and the handle moving up and forward. You'll see here the club will follow and it will release, but we want it to release later. If this handle stops, so if I stop this handle, that club overtakes. Being flippy at impact is one of the worst feelings you can have in golf, in my opinion. I hate it when my impact feels flippy or floppy. I much prefer to feel that kind of pressured impact where you get that beautiful ball and turf strike. So today I want to talk to you about why you might get flippy and also a couple of fixes that you can use that would transform how your hand, let's call it security, feels through impact. So basically why we get flippy, it happens for a number of reasons. One of the reasons could be that your pressure is moving to your trail foot, therefore your low point is before the golf ball, so your strike becomes flippy where the ball is. So having your pelvis move laterally and having the pressure on the lead side helps shift that low point to a later position to give you that later hit as people like to describe it, becomes a less flippy impact. So that would definitely be a way of looking at it. The second and third way, let's talk about these together, would be more about playing them club face. So if the club face is open, you're gonna to flip to square it up to stop the ball slicing. It becomes instinctive to do that. If the plane is over and steep or above plane, then you're gonna early extend and that makes the body action cause the flippiness through the golf ball. So if the body is going towards the ball, your hands will start to work harder because the body is reducing its speed too early. So basically the hands get the speed earlier than they need to. It's what we call a kinematic sequence. So this wants to decelerate at the right time and then these hands accelerate. Obviously if the body decelerates too early, the hands get all the speed which they want, but just at the wrong time. So your swing can be very, very fast in the wrong place. So really we want to try and feel that we get better at moving to the golf ball with a better kind of posture position and right arm left arm mechanics with a better club face to ensure we don't flip. One of the best ways to do this is to maintain a good width. If your width is narrow you are then going to throw your arms and that thing makes you flippy to make good contact. So if we are in a better posture position with the arm that is basically structured or have that radius maintained, that's going to help us then move and move the handle more forward through impact to make sure we don't throw that club head away, as we would call it. We want the, the kind of force to be in the handle and the handle moving up and forward. You'll see here the club will follow and it will release, but we want it to release later. If this handle stops, so if I stop this handle, that club overtakes. So we very much want to feel that we're pulling the force through the handle. And the best way of achieving that is to get the handle low and be in posture here and then pull the handle up and through, through impact. This is ultimately the perfect way of fixing the flippiness is by moving really well prior to contact. So one of the best ways of doing that is maintaining your width, your structure. So if you take your lead hand on the club and put your trail hand on, top of your lead hand like this and push down that pushing down helps you feel that lead arm lengthen and we want this hand to be low at this position ideally with the toe more down so feeling that kind of structure pushing down the arm really feels it starts to get a bit of a workout we can use things like tubing and tie it around our shoulder or around our waist and feel we pull the tubing or even a little device like a Sammy device from Tour Striker, if he still makes them, which we can attach to ourselves here and put around the handle. But we want to feel that we get that structure with our arms and the handle nice and low in this position here. And then from there we can move up and through the golf ball more instinctively and more naturally and get a lovely ball and turf but we're still trying to extend. That one felt buttery sweet and all I focused on there was trying to get that structure and downforce if you like before the ball and then move through the ball with commitment. So pre and post impact were really the key things and impact just took care of itself. The other drill I recommend a lot is take an object. I've used a putter grip because they're nice and solid, but you can use a, a bit of cut down shaft. 
put a bit of tubing, this is just a knee band, but you can use any kind of tubing, wrap it around the club. And what we're gonna try and do with this is basically engage the hands to work well. And, th and this exercise I got from a, a good friend of mine, Martin Chuck. But if I have this held on here and then feel this tension increases through impact, and as I get through to this post-impact position, try and get these to be parallel to each other and have that structure, I tell you, this is not easy. And what I'd encourage you to do initially is maybe hit a few, few little practice swings like that, just to get a feel of how the hands feel when you do that. And then what we will do then is take it to some small shots. Again, low and high. And when you take it to some shots, tee the ball up, make it easier. But get this on there, stretch it apart. And we're just gonna literally chip the ball away. And it's not really about hitting great shots with this. It's all about achieving the feeling of that stretch and that non-closing down of this tubing, which would happen if you flipped the ball. The ideal world would be maybe for me, you'd go to a short game area and you'd hit probably 10 or 15 little chips doing this drill. And once you got this feel of this drill, you would then hit a normal shot straight after. Again, great crispy contact there. These are probably the best contacts I've made, made for weeks. I struggle taking a nice divot after the ball, but this has felt quite easy and it'll feel easy to you too. Let's give you one more little exercise to do that would be a real game changer for you. So the last exercise, again, it's a difficult one. Kind of call this the kind of voodoo drill. Again, we're gonna put the hand down the shaft and we're gonna push with our trail elbow, trail hand, push the lead hand like this. Again, very difficult to hit shots doing this. You can hit shots doing this, but for me, you can just do a few practice swings. Again, trying to feel the forces in the handle, not in the club head. The club head will take care of itself. Gravity and all the forces are making the club would want to do this. We don't need to encourage that, but we definitely need to feel this handle. It pulls up and round the corner. We often describe it as trying to pull the grip off the shaft to get that feeling of moving up. We should never really try and constantly hit down the golf ball. Again, if the handle goes forward, you'll see there that the club head goes down. If I try and go down, the handle necessarily doesn't, doesn't necessarily want to go forward. We want the handle to go forward. You can have too much, obviously, shaft lean and separation. We want to feel that it's on the arc and it's connected. So we don't get that feeling of throwing the hands forward and being disconnected and getting heel strikes or big push shots or even slices. The club face is definitely gonna close, but we're not flapping to close it. It's a rotational move, and then the club gets more flappy here. So the voodoo drill, again, you would just feel, again, you could hit maybe short shots, trying to feel that your hand doesn't come off the club, build that up, and again, I'd suggest teeing it up. And then once you've done that, start to hit more normal shots straight after.